Minecraft is an enormous and expansive game built on surprisingly simple mechanics. But with a lack of tutorials, it can be confusing for many newcomers. Follow me, William Strife, as I cover the basics to the advanced of crafting, surviving, and building. Welcome to the Minecraft Guide. Mining, exploring, building, adventuring, and fighting. From the beautiful grasslands, swamps, deserts, tundras, and jungles of the overworld to the hellish depths of the nether, Minecraft is expansive and offers an inconceivable number of creative options. However, one has to ask sooner or later, is there an end to this game? Well, just by chance, there is a sort of conclusion. But before you can see the game credits roll, you have to find a way to visit the dimension called the end. The End is a shadowy other world, which is the origin and home of the tall, thin monsters known as Endermen. In order to visit the place where they come from, though, you first need to find one of three possible fortresses which house an Ender portal frame. Fortresses are large structures located entirely underground, completely hidden from sight. This makes finding them next to impossible, however, there is an item that will literally lead you right to the nearest ender portal and the fortress it's inside. To hone in on the fortress, you need to craft multiple eyes of ender. This item is made by combining one blaze powder and one ender pearl. Killing the tall dark endermen is how you acquire the pearls, but they don't drop all the time, so getting enough of them can be a bit time consuming. Meanwhile, blaze powder is made from blaze rods, an item dropped by a mob that only spawns in the nether. For more information on how to exactly find a blaze, check out the specific guide over the nether. Anyways, with several eyes of ender on hand, you want to right click while holding one. Immediately it will fly out of your hand and off in the direction of the nearest ender portal, and float in the air a good distance away. After hovering for a short period, it will either fall back to the ground to be picked up and used again, or it will shatter and you'll have to use a new Eye of Ender to continue the search. This is half the reason you need many eyes to find the fortress and its Ender portal, as there's a 1 in 5 chance that any eye will shatter when it's used. Now, the Eye of Ender will always fly upward when you're a good distance away from the portal, but once you get close enough, it will begin to fly directly underground when used. Once this happens, it's best to put the eyes away and start digging, and possibly make a house to live out of above ground. After all, this is the end game, so having a small base of operations in the area isn't a bad idea. Once you've found the fortress, it's important to know that these structures can be very large and commonly have a maze-like layout that makes them hard to navigate. As such, there's no real advice that can be given when searching through one for the Ender Portal. You can still use the Ender Eyes when underground though, as they specifically hone in on not the fortress but the portal frame, but they can just as easily vanish into a wall when used underground. Now, once you do find the incomplete portal, consisting of just the frame, you need to watch out for silverfish, as they nest in the blocks making up the portal chamber. If you want more info on silverfish, you can check out the earlier mob guide for details. Anyways, after you dispose of any silverfish you find and anything that can spawn them, you'll need to complete the ender portal to activate it. This is the other reason you need many eyes of ender because the Ender Portal is incomplete, and the only way to activate it is by placing an Eye of Ender in each block that makes up the frame, of which there are 12. Now, before you venture through the Ender Portal, you should be well prepared. The things you need to take with you are a stack of cobblestone, an iron pick, a full set of iron armor, a decent supply of food like steak or chicken, a bow with full durability and at least three stacks of arrows, or a few arrows with a bow enchanted with infinity, an iron sword or better, and depending on your strategy, a few stacks of ladders or vines. Beyond the black ethereal portal is the end, a dark dimension consisting of a single large floating landmass. This island wouldn't be so dangerous if it wasn't for the island's primary inhabitants, the game's final boss, the Ender Dragon. The first thing you need to be aware of is that this dragon is keen on attacking you, and will swoop down to nix you as soon as possible. This attack isn't particularly damaging, but it does have massive knockback, which creates a particular problem when you first arrive in the end. After jumping through the portal, you'll spawn on a small obsidian platform. 
this platform will sometimes spawn in midair and be detached from the main floating island. Your first problem is that, right after arriving, the dragon will perform swoop attacks and try to knock you off into the void below. To make things worse, the dragon can and will pass through the obsidian and white endstone the landmass is made of, while at the same time, it will destroy any blocks you place. Your goal is to either get far enough inland so it doesn't knock you off, or shoot it with your bow, which makes it turn and fly away. This can be the most difficult part of the battle, so it may be a good idea to set your spawn point just outside the portal and enter the end with no equipment, except cobblestone and a cheap pick to create a secure route to the main island, or at least find out if the obsidian platform spawns in a bad location. After finding or creating a path off the obsidian platform, you can begin the first phase of the battle with the Ender Dragon, which is to destroy all of the healing crystals sitting atop obsidian pillars which dot the landscape. If you don't destroy them, the Ender Dragon will continue to regenerate health at a very fast pace, making it near impossible to kill. This may seem like a difficult task, but it's simpler than you may imagine. These crystals are extremely delicate, thus a single arrow strike is more than enough to destroy them. You can, however, use ladders or vines to climb the pillars, but this method is far from the best idea, as the Ender Dragon is likely to knock you off, and fall damage can quite easily kill you in an instant. Thus, it's a far better and safer idea to simply practice your marksmanship on the crystals instead. After destroying all of the shining pylons atop the towers, the Ender Dragon will be completely vulnerable to your attacks. While there are plenty of ways to handle the battle from this point, the simplest, easiest, but unfortunately longest method involves drawing your bow and waiting for the beast to fly directly at you. Shooting the dragon's head deals the most damage, while hitting any other part of its body deals only a quarter of the damage a headshot does. Additionally, when you damage the dragon while it's charging you, it will most often break its attack and begin to run before trying to charge again. Using this strategy results in a particularly slow battle, but it's also the safest method. One thing that you need to watch out for, though, are the multiple Endermen which call the end home. They are the reason you should always bring a sword with you, as if you gain some unwanted attention from them, they will pose the most threat, being both quicker and harder hitting than the dragon. However, there is a way to ensure you don't aggravate them. If you wear a pumpkin for a helmet, Endermen will never get angry when you look at them. The problem with doing this, however, is wearing a pumpkin on your head severely obstructs your view. Now, after following the tedious process of disabling the dragon's defenses and shooting it out of the sky one arrow at a time, upon the final hit it will explode and drop a massive amount of experience. In addition, it will spawn a portal back to the overworld that, being made out of bedrock, cannot be destroyed. Before going through though, there's a special trophy that sits in the middle of the portal. A dragon egg. When you touch it, it will teleport to a random location nearby, so if you want to take it for your trophy case, you'll need to force it to drop on top of something like a torch. The same torch trick you would use to destroy a large column of sand or gravel. Anyways, with or without the egg, you can jump through the portal which leads back to the overworld. Doing so will trigger one of the hardest things for an open world game to display. The credits. Now, you may be asking why would you go through all of the trouble to kill the Ender Dragon? Just what sort of reward do you get for finding and conquering this foe? Well, that question brings up a sizable bit of bad news. Aside from the personal satisfaction of killing the Ender Dragon, collecting the egg it spawns, seeing the credits roll, and getting a unique poem that makes you question who is really creating or destroying the world, there is no tangible or gameplay-enhancing reward to speak of. You could say that being able to harvest endstone and use it as a building material is a reward, as you can freely travel to and from the end after defeating its winged master. But that's hardly a reward proportionate to the challenge involved. As it stands though, since the Ender Dragon's introduction up through version 1.7, Minecraft offers no significant reasons to endure the trials of the end. That isn't to say there won't be reasons later though, as Minecraft is an enormous and expansive game.
built on surprisingly simple mechanics, and it's being updated and changed on a regular basis. I hope you enjoyed the adventure from world creation to ending credits, not forgetting all of the unique items, blocks, mechanics, tricks, and fun in between. Hopefully, now you truly understand how to go from humble beginnings to an ultimate builder and mighty king of all creation. I'm William Strife, and if you enjoyed the series and would like more from me, be certain to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share. I hope to see you soon in another video series. Until another time, though, from the Yorkscast, Strife out. Strife out.